Well, hello, my friends. We will continue our journey in learning how to find areas using z-score boundaries, now that we know how to read a z-score. Now, finding the areas under the standard normal distribution requires a carefully laid plan. And I'm going to give you some steps that should help. Now, let me tell you from experience what I, what I come across here. So many folks decide that they don't have to follow the plan and they rush ahead and they do it and then they miss it all. And finally come back and say, well, old dog didn't know what he was talking about. We need a plan. First thing you do is draw a picture of the bell curve. Now listen to me. The first thing you do is draw the stinking picture. The picture is critical so that you can analyze it and know what's going on. So you draw a picture, you label the values that are provided, you determine the area that you are asked to identify, you formulate a plan for finding the area, perform the calculations, and follow the plan and all will be well. Now again, where do you start? You start by drawing the stinking picture. You label the values that are provided. Now, if your values are provided or Z-scores, everything's fine. If you're given values that are not Z-scores, then on the picture, you take those values and you convert them to Z-scores. You determine the area that you're asked to identify. You formulate a plan for that area and perform the calculations. And if you follow this plan, all will be well. If you decide not to draw the stinking picture, you're on your own. Now, let us look at a problem. Find the areas under the curve between z-scores of negative 1.45 and a z-score of 1.89. And you notice how I've written that. Find the probability that z lies between negative 1.5 and 1.89. Now, the five-step plan is to draw a picture. You see that I've drawn the stinking picture. Label the values that are provided, determine the area that you're asked to identify, formulate a plan to find the area, and perform the calculations. Well, let's label the areas. The areas that we're asked to find are between negative 1.45 and 1.89. Now then, this is the area that we're asked to identify. Now we need to formulate a plan. Now we're in luck in this problem because everything starts out as a z-score. If it started out as raw data, we would have had to convert it to z-scores, and then we could have gone to work. Now, here's the plan. The tables, to start with, give us the area for 1.89 for everything back to the left of 1.89. The tables, likewise, give us all of the area to the left of negative 1.45. So if we look at our picture, what the tables provide are this area and this area, and we can see that subtract this area minus that area will give us the area that we're looking for. So the probability that z lies between negative 1.45 and 1.89 is the probability of 1.89, this entire probability, minus the probability of negative 1.45. Now we have a plan. And then we would just have time to read the tables. We read the tables and we find that the probability of 1.89, 1.89 is 0 0.9706. We find the probability of negative 1.45 next. And we look at that table, negative 1.45 is 0 0.07. Three, five, so we plug those in. Now we're looking for 0 0.9706 minus 0 0.0735. And when we get that, we find that the area is equal to 0.8971, or 89.71% of the area lies within those boundaries. Now what I want you to do again is look at how we did this. We take a sip of good hot coffee, we calmly meditate, we don't panic, we draw the stinking picture of a bell curve, we label the parts, the boundaries that we're looking for, we're in luck, they're z-scores, so we don't have to convert them to z-scores, they're already converted for us. We look at the area that we need and we notice what the table gives us and we come up with a plan. Our plan is to subtract this area minus this area right here and it gives us the area that we're looking for. We go read the tables, plug in the values, and perform the calculations. What could be easier than that? Well, well, what do you know? 
Our area is 89.71%. Remember, decimals, percents, and probabilities can all be written the same way. 0.8971 is 89.71%. So if we randomly select a, a, a data out of this data set, 89.71% of the time it will fall within that area. Now, let's find another one. Let's find the probability that Z is greater than 1.23. Again, we draw the stinking picture. We label the values that are provided. And we identify the area that we're looking for. And then we notice the area that is given by the table. And we come up with a plan. Since the table gives us this, and we're looking for the what's to the right, we come up with a plan that the area where the probability we're looking for is 1, which is the total area, minus the probability of 1.23, which is what the bell curve, uh, or what the z-score tables give us. So we look at the table, we find 1.23, and we plug it in, 1 minus 0 0.8907, and lo and behold, we perform the calculation, and it's 0 0.1093, so there is now 10.93% of the population 10.93% of the area lies to the right of a z-score of 1.23. Now, you notice I said population. By population, I'm referring to the entire distribution. The probability that if we randomly select a data point out of that population, that that data point will have a z-score greater than 1.23 is 10.93%. Look at the plan, draw the picture, label the values. If those values are not z-scores, convert them to z-scores. Determine the area that you're asked to identify. Formulate a plan for finding that area based upon the way, what the information the tables give you. Read the tables, plug it in, perform the calculations, and you're off to the races. Now, let's look at the plan again. Draw a picture of the bell curve, label the values that are provided, determine the area that you're asked to identify, formulate a plan for finding the area, perform the calculations. Follow that plan and all will be well. Now again, if your curve is not a, sta a standard normal distribution, then and you just have a regular distribution, then you label those values you have in the picture, you convert them to z-scores, and then you're off to the races. You've got things to do. I want to thank you very much for your support and the word mantra of the Hunger Games. Again, may the odds be ever in your favor. And of course, I mean that unless we're in the same competition. Then it's every man for himself. You have a good day.